Andy, I have a question. Yeah. You were talking about accents or filler flowers. Mm-hmm. If you look at this envelope that I did today, do you see the red ones that I was trying to make? Little tiny eyes, yeah. Okay. How do you make those so they don't get all muddy? I know you just take the corner of your brush or you take your liner and just dab, dab, dab. Are you trying to do like a little mini hydrania? Oh, not yeah. hydrania. Uh, hibiscus. Yeah, can you see that? Not hydrania. Um, wisteria. Wisteria. Yeah, wisteria. wisteria. Yeah. yeah. See, I have a brain issue. I can't remember. Yeah. Names. How do you do that so it doesn't look all muddy? You're using what size brush there? I used a liner brush. A liner brush. Yeah. Was that the wrong thing? Well, you're going to get definitely a different look with a liner brush. You're really getting tiny. I would try still with that flat brush. And again, those little tiny chisel strokes. Okay. Yeah. I would, but these I... should be more like dots, shouldn't they, instead of those tips? Well, a lot of those are done with a scruffy brush. Yeah, but this, yeah, I've seen, like, Donna does it, and other people, they just take, they make, like, a line, and then they just take their liner, right, and go down it or something, they tap, 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 tap. Well, liner brush, you definitely need maybe some water in there. Okay, that I did not do. Just a little tiny bit. Water. If your paint is too thick, wipe out my brush so it's not so globby. And then I pull out just a little tiny bit off the edge before I go to do the stroke. Right, so again, you're building almost like that wild flower, a little bit wider, a little bit wider. You're coming in, but you're just doing like little dots. Is that? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? It's probably blown out. Should those dots like be in a row? Kind of like a, you know, layer it or... Um... Let me see if I can get you closer here. Is this the kind of look you're trying to just use the liner? as the... Yeah, mm -hmm. but to make it kind of like curve like a wisteria. Yeah, so you're definitely going to put your little... You know, shape in there. It looks I'm like looking you... at yours and looking at mine, I'm trying to fill up the whole shape, and I see you've got a lot of space in between. Yeah, maybe that's. And it, that could be my mind so muddy looking. Right. Well, that's a thought to put a background, like maybe you like did. That, and then just if you're doing something yeah. so tiny, then uh -huh. you can maybe do it like that. But you see how I actually double loaded my brush here too. I've got the the color here, and then I go in a tip a little bit of the darker green. Mm -hmm. right. And then, yeah, mm -hmm. you're trying to fill in. And so you have a lot of this, whatever the space, color of your background is going to mm -hmm. be there. Yeah, I think I was trying to make dots, and I don't think I need dots. It yeah. looks like you're making... Just little touches. Like flash marks. <laughs> Yeah, just little, like, dots, but pulling just slightly. Mm hmm Maybe you were trying to be too perfect, so. Yeah. I don't know. I, I couldn't you know? get the, I was trying to get the shape, and it yeah. just wasn't working. Yeah, so if you want to play that tiny, then maybe you got to get a little bit of that background color going on here first. Okay, this is the shape I want to make it. And then, yeah, I like the thought of the background shape. And then Better get go me in. Started. Oops, that's too heavy. I got too much paint on my brush. So again, that could be it too, right? Like it's the control of paint. And then yeah, a little bit more spacey there for mm -hmm. little tiny tiny hydra uh, wisterias. <laughs> yeah. And the um, other question I have, I know Donna keeps saying, and you've been saying it as well, um, not to leave your brush in the water. Well, overnight yeah. is not a good thing, yep. <laughs> yeah, well, when I, okay, after I paint something, you know, and I'm ready to do a different stroke or whatever, I take my brush and put it in the water, and I might set the brush, I take it out of the water and set it to the side. Well, I, uh, 
my paint there still must be paint inside the brush and it just gets all hard yeah that's why i leave it in the water that's Donna's so much faster see. and she yeah. definitely okay. is speedy gonzalez compared to us and if we're what? sitting there playing for three hours and that brush is out on on your desk like mm -hmm. that with a little bit of it's rinsed but it still has residue of yeah. paint it's gonna definitely get hard on you so yeah, I, well, I've, it might have gotten hard and I've ruined a couple of brushes by doing it that way. So I decided I would just leave it in the water for yeah, just hours. The, the biggest thing is just don't drown them, right? You want to make sure that your water's not too high and the water is not going higher than the silver. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then that way that you're not drowning the handle so much. Yeah. Okay. That's the I wondered if thing. you were having the same problem because well, I, I knew the, you were yeah. trying to take yours out of the water too. And... Right. So here, mm -hmm. how the water is right, right up in the handle, and if I left that there for three hours, it would start to really like drown my brush. Right. Okay. It. And then all of a sudden, the paint is all coming off of them. Yeah. So okay. definitely, that's the big thing. Use this to clean your brush. Right. Wipe it out, and then if you need to, just let it sit there. Right, then it's up uh, out of the water a little bit, right? So you're not drowning the handle part, and then mm -hmm. just keeping the the brush, the bristles damp. Yeah, yeah. Well, mine have just been getting so hard as I set them to the side, and then when I pick one up, it's like, oh, this thing is ruined. And, yeah, yeah. And try to get it soak it with a little bit of Murphy's oil, and I actually do uh, a third. Murphy's oil, third rubbing alcohol, and a third water in a little glass, and let them, mm -hmm. you know, I know it's not good to have it sitting there like this in water all night long, um, even in, in your little bucket, so then that way they're laying mm -hmm. nicely, so they're not being crinked. And okay. overnight, leave it overnight if you want, right? Again, not drowning your brush so that it's not wetting the handle, sure. right? And then okay. and that'll help loosen out some of that hard paint. All right. Yeah, I've gone back to just keeping letting them stay in the water for a while. Yeah, and then till you go and wash them properly, then you get the soap and water out, and then I'm really cleaning them properly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely, it's so easy to uh, wreck brushes with lack of caring for them, or you know, leaving them out. <laughs> right. But yeah, it went. I've never had a problem except for the paint falling off the handles. And I'd rather that happen than getting paint stuck in there. So another idea for this little tiny hydrangea suit is just tapping with your um, flat brush, right? Try to get that six or ten, I mean eight or ten, and just making like a, uh, almost like a scruffy brush, like a pounce flower kind of look. And, and doing it that way too, instead of the liner brush. You're just using, use an old brush if you want to do the dab flower. Okay. Yeah, that's been helpful, what you're yeah, showing me. Yeah, see the bigger version of it, right? So you're working, making that same kind of look with the scruffy brush, but you're trying to get one so tiny that you got too much width for your scruffy brush, so you got to use a, an old six or eight, and then you can get that kind of scruffy look. You can do pouncing, like a scruffy, just wreck your brush. Right. Or you can do like little, again, I got to flatten this brush out because it gets too wide on the tip, and I'm trying to do chisels. Right, so even with an old brush, I still want to try to keep it as skinny as possible. And should I be starting at the top of that rather than at the bottom? I always find it it's easier. Okay, because I've been starting layering. at the bottom to try to get the wrong, the wrong shape at the bottom. Yeah, because so you always that want... Could be another problem. Yeah, you always want the light to be layering on top of each other. Okay. Right, unless you're doing it with a scruffy brush, and then you know you can do do it sideways, right? You have a little bit of dark in there. Right, you're working yourself to the tip, like your typical high uh, hibiscus. Right, and then all the top yeah. part here is all lighter, and under here is kind of like darker. You can work your way that way, but if you're doing like more of a layered look. 
right? Then it's easier to get the the lighter color to layer on the darker color and work your way back. Okay, now if you're doing a hibiscus stamen, again, you should start at the top of that, you know, at the end of the stamen. It's more like a star, isn't it? Um, hibiscus flower. Okay. Is it? Or, or am I well, confused? I'm thinking about some stamen have this look. Little fl mm. yeah, and then they might have like yeah. little fleckles on each one. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, you're gonna use your liner brush. Right, and then it's like a little star. And then now do you make dots? You on can it? use your liner oh. brush, right, if you want. But yeah, you're just kind of making little dots. A little bit of green in there. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I'm not very good at doing that. Um, like, you know, on a daisy, how you sometimes add the... A few little dots the center, in the center. A few little dots, yeah. Mine just get all muddy and messed. And... Yeah, it's all about playing and practicing those little random dots. More mm -hmm. pressure is going to make bigger ones, right? And then just trying to tickle just the very, very edge. Right? And when you're doing those flowers, it's nice to have uh, randomness, right? They don't all have to be the same size. Let's see if I can give you a quick little flower here. Okay, so when you want tiny little flowers that you're not layering. Oops, I've still got too much water in my brush. Let's squish it a little bit more. What's Penny working on there? That looks pretty. Oh, I haven't seen her in a while. What's she doing? Oh, she's practicing her roses. Got a lavender rose going there. Yeah. That's awesome, Penny. <laughs> You're gonna have, I'm gonna have you come and do some demos for us sometime. <laughs> what are you doing? She's shutting herself off. No, don't shut yourself off. Oh yeah, that's from one of my rose projects. Yeah, the, these these are my hardest strokes. So when I'm practicing, oh, that's nice. always where I go. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. I know that's very nice. Yeah, play the, this this stroke right there, that is my nemesis. Yeah. So. So I practice it every every it. day, every project, my leftover paint, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like your S stroke. So My struggle this. was with leaves, and I almost conquered. Now, I'm not perfected, but I have followed Mandy's program with the leaves, and I am impressed at how much better I'm doing. And as soon as I'm, I'm about ready to move on to those flower strokes, much better. Think about that one. I've, I've yeah. been doing it about a year, and I still am inconsistent. One day I'll get it, and the next day I can't do it to save my life. <laughs> when I break it down, what does everybody that... do to keep their paint from getting dry on the top? Like when you're, you know, uh, taking too long. I mean, I've been doing smaller and smaller uh, sizes out of my bottle, you know. Yeah, and sometimes I'll just touch that dry skim and wipe it right off. And underneath okay, it right. is a little bit fresher. I can see that would be helpful, yeah. Yeah, especially if you have it in a little bit higher blob, then it, it'll stay wet deeper. Uh, okay. But yeah, Thank uh, you. just to go back a little, I know I got sidetracked there a little bit, but uh, Penny, when I break down that, that stroke, just all by itself, what do you see? It's a one stroke leaf. leaf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, can you so. can you see this though? See how I'm getting all fuzzy there on the end? Do you have enough moisture going on? Is that dryness? That's what I have in my brush after the stroke. Yeah. I gotta make it bigger. Okay, show me again and make it bigger. 
You gotta talk though, sorry. Oh, sorry, right there. That's after I did the stroke. Yeah, it seems to be definitely a lot of moisture in there. Yeah, it's the pressure. I'm, I'm, I'm heavy handed when I'm, I'm sure. not supposed to be. Yeah, me too. Uh, and my pinky, I always use it as a fulcrum. Um, the problem with that is my pinky is super short, and I choke up too far on my brush when I put my pinky down. Uh, I have to be holding it too close. So you have to release. And then I'm not loose enough. Steady so. yourself. So, yeah, this is what I want. I like breaking down the science of things, right? So then you're going to go down a little bit lower. Push up a little again. Right? So we, this is like the morning glory buds, too. I was playing around with. So, yeah, when you... Right, so you have to wrap it around. You're starting at the bottom, and you're wrapping it around, and you want to come right up on the edge of the side. So once you add those leaves, that's when it starts to look better. Right? So trying this all by itself and not finishing it with some leaves. You got to put the leaves in there. Okay, so I didn't put very much white. I did another spot here. So when you're doing small little centers, right? Definitely you just want to have like your teardrop, right? Whether you do it smooth, a little bit fancy, a little bit irregular, right? You still want that pivot point, right? Then you can get like a smaller little center. And that's when the little Davi centers that we were talking about, Sue, it looks pretty. All right, you have that pivot point. And then a lot of times I don't even use a liner brush. I just use the corner of my flat brush and just dab, 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 dab. Grab some fresh white. So that's what we usually do is just use the corner of our brush, not even a liner brush. But you could go in and, you know, dab, dab, dab with your little liner brush, too. Yeah, I think one of my problems, too, is I try to put too much in, like, the center. You know, too many dots. Yeah, that's getting to move to be too many. And then it gets too muddy, and then it's like, oh, boy, now what do I do? Yep, I'm see what I did? Out. See what I did? Yeah. <laughs> what am I notorious for? <laughs> Erasing. I do that a lot. Yeah. Erasing. <laughs> I love it. And then I just try again. And if I have to go over and do the stroke again, then I'll go over and fix my color. Right. Sometimes we have to go over twice just to intensify things or fix something. Right. But yeah, just doing it now with, you know, subconscious. Again, I don't like to think sometimes, um, you know, just trying to make it simple. If you're having a hard time with the corner of your brush, then yeah, definitely come over and use your liner brush. But the more you play and the more you practice just barely touching that brush, right, making sure you have a good little gloop on there so that it, and you touch down. Right. And staying in the very, very center of the pivot. Because a lot of times we're making flowers and we're like, if you're making a rose or anything that you have to layer, then you're doing more of the shell stroke. So you're really working your way around a big center, like a poppy. Then you got to really have that space to fall around it right so it's a lot wider not the pivot oops 
I'm trying to stay up off my paper without pivoting. <laughs> so yeah, it definitely is a little bit looser when you you don't you're not grounded. Then you're gonna be taking, you know, maybe some green or yellow. Get wet on wet. Then you want a much bigger circle. Right. Wet on wet. Just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. So you gotta make your flowers a little bit tighter sometimes too. So those tiny little spots will look elegant in there. Does that make sense to you too? Yeah, How... you've given me a lot of good suggestions because what I was doing wasn't working. Yeah, definitely pivot point uh, teardrops. Nice and tight where they're touching, the pivot is touching yourself all the way around the circle. Okay, if you make a flower series, include some of this in there. I will. Those are okay. definitely, they with yeah. tiny little eights or tens, these are definitely make those little nice little accent flowers. And um, definitely coming in a little bit smaller, like when we're layering them, I play around with you in course number two with the hydrangeas mm -hmm. as well, doing some layered flowers. All right. So, because I'm doing it with a 16, but just again, you're starting off very small, right? Just tiny little teardrops. And then you're layering, you can come in a little bit bigger. Right. Sometimes you can add more petals to them as you're layering them down. Oop, lower and lower. My hands aren't working today. Right. Then you can start making them a little bigger. But always with a pivot. Right? So that you're slowly making them bigger too. Right, see where my pivot is, right in the middle. Just a little wobbly waggle up on that chisel, right up on that chisel to close. Especially when you're going upside down. Right. So yeah, there's some of those little filler flowers that we play around with. And then you're going to leave room for you putting the odd leaf in there. Again, see how very, very um, gentle pressure to make them smaller. And then with the flowers, as they get bigger and bigger, then you can start really pushing down to make those one stroke leaves even bigger too, right? A lot of variation in shape and size, and it's all about pressure, guys. And don't be afraid of that dirty brush, right? Because that's how Donna gets those beautiful different colors in her leaves, is when she has like a little bit of trace of magenta from her flower. She just gives it a, a one-two wipe, like one-two, like don't wipe too much. Then come in and load up your green colors for your leaves, and then you'll get that little streak of pink pop through. Which is a lot of fun, too. So you gotta do your work with the pink. Wipe it out. Come in and grab some greens. And then I'm not even putting the same amount of pressure. Sometimes there's still some deeper pink in there. And then when you go to do your leaf, hopefully you still have some pink in there. Okay. It depends on how pink you want them. 
So yeah, play around with your dirty brush. Some different colors. But staying on the same side of the color wheel sometimes is safer. So your greens, your blues are all going to match together a little bit better. When you start mixing too much with your pink and your green are opposites on the color wheel, definitely you're going to start getting that brown tone if you over mix it. So yeah. that's part of the trick on that one is try not to over mix. Right. You got lots of moisture in your brush. And then you're coming in with that green, but you're not over mixing it. You're just kind of working in a little bit. And then you get that nice little rainbow of warmth in your, your leaf. So yeah, lots of little tricks and colors and things to do. And, um, Definitely keep an eye on my Facebook page because that's usually where I announce all of my classes when they're coming up and remind you about our meet and greets and any little sales that I have, promotions that I have. Definitely, I'm, I don't have an email list. I don't send people emails for this kind of stuff. So if you can at least uh, pop onto my page every once in a while just to kind of keep an eye on some important groups and things like that, that'd be wonderful and uh or follow my youtube because then after the meet and greets i definitely sometimes i'm catching little moments of our class here and putting them on there now so that'll remind you as well if you're on my youtube yeah it's okay so i'm looking at some of your um you know the comma strokes yeah but the beginning of the class is that yeah how you doing with them now um, I could do better, but I've, all of it's gotten better. My leaves have improved, um, so I'll send you some new pictures of what I've worked on. Yeah, definitely, we can I've, keep going through the program, but keep coming back and revisiting some of those areas that, um, you know, you might be struggling. So here I can see definitely the comma stroke. This is the biggest one. When you were doing them with more pressure, you were getting more of the shape. But when you're trying to do them smaller, then you're starting to draw with them. Yes. Right. So it's still all about pressure still. Trying to make... The good news is I'm recognizing when I do it incorrectly. Right. So... Exactly. So well, yeah, try better. not to draw. Try to just pressure and guide the brush. Right? So it's not like a pencil where you're pulling it around and, and coming around. So it's just pressure and easing up on that pressure slowly as you guide it to a point. Okay. That's a, yeah, big, a lot of people try to draw because we're so used to pencils and coloring books growing up and stuff, right? So we think right. where it can draw with our yes right? yeah and then fill it in if we need to <laughs> right is the biggest <laughs> uh thing that we our minds want to do but yeah with stroke work is definitely all about pressure and then s easing up on that pressure slowly getting to that point okay and then this is where i start to do those little chisels come back when you start to add one of those and then follow it along. And this is my little trick where I like to curl it around my flowers, right? So whatever you call it, it you know, pointed, comma stroke, dolphin nose, I gave it a nickname, right? So again, when you're layering and you want to grab the side of a petal and then add that, you know, that's where I like to add that little extra point in there. So our comma strokes will change and evolve, and then depending on if you were doing them sideways, that's what Penny was doing earlier, she was practicing all in different directions. Because that is basically like a scoop. You can do it in a daisy kind of comma stroke way, but sometimes when you have a little lighter touch, and then you gradually push, and then you come back out, it just makes it a little bit more elegant to wrap those front petals around some of your flowers. Right, so you start playing with them a little bit more, dragging them a little bit more to wrap them around your buds. So 
the more you play with them definitely in different directions upside down angles right definitely you'll get more comfortable with them right. do a clock with them force yourself to keep going into the pivot just to change directions because usually when you do go and do these flowers you're you're changing direction so you may start uh right to left here but here you're going to start left to right okay. i just come up with wacky little things just to keep getting you to play right? just so that you you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and then the more you can play... I like it. I like it in my comfort zone. <laughs> you don't learn anything that way. <laughs> I know, I know. Right? And I think I even played with another flower like that where we did it this way. And then we did it this way. Right? To make some different petal shapes. Just playing. Pushing, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I have truly just getting through the first beginning of your program. I've I've gained a lot. I good, really have. Good. I'm so glad to hear. I'm so, so you know. I always like to hear the feedback. I always worry when I don't hear from people. I always think, okay, there's got to be just a time thing. Maybe they just haven't got time to get through it all, <laughs> right? And uh, yeah. but definitely, please send me pictures anytime. Uh, if there's any questions that you have. You know, definitely, I'm here to help you through your your program, and even meet with you private if we, if you like. I'm saving that. I mean, I'm kind of. A couple times I thought, oh, I'd like to talk to her privately, but I'm saving it till I get to you know several things at once. Oh you know, no, no, don't do. save it. It's 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 anytime, dear, anytime. If you're struggling, if I, if I can't answer you by circling something or explaining it through words on a text, then I'll say, hey, do you have time to meet me on Zoom? You know, sometimes it's just a quick meeting we need to do. So, yeah, well, for my VIPs, definitely, I want to see you get through that program. And if there's any way that I can help, please just contact me. All right. Well, like I said, I've been taking some pictures, and I just haven't sent them yet, and I will all send them to you tonight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's wonderful. So how you doing there, Miss uh, Penny? What are you playing on now? Are you done? I can't see you anymore. There you. <laughs> oh, she's awesome. She always comes and plays, gets the paint out. So I'm also here to pick my brain too. So any way I can help, guys. Sometimes I we don't even get a lot of paint out. I just keep answering questions. Um. Little, I'm, I'm little. still here on my tablet, Mandy. My phone battery died. Ah, uh, darn. Yeah. They don't last very long, do they? So, yeah, watch out for the next series to be coming. I'm going to be working on those for the next couple of weeks and getting some examples done. And then hopefully I'll have something together that I can show you to announce the date. And I just wanted to see how you guys felt about the idea of doing a design series. 